With global climate change and an increasing human population with longer lifespans, the way we use and treat our natural environments has become increasingly important. Many of today's food systems and the processes associated with them are becoming unsustainable. Lifestyle choices such as where we buy our food and how it is produced are more important today than ever before. Our future depends on the development, production, and use of sustainable practices. No matter where we live, sustainability offers opportunities and challenges. For this project, we collaborated with students from the University of San Luis, Mexico. Our focus was on the food sustainability efforts and challenges faced by both the University of Minnesota Duluth and the families of a small school located outside San Luis, Mexico. Francisco Gonzalez Bocanegra. Through our research at UMD, we identified the three following challenges in food sustainability. The local climate causing shorter growing seasons, raising awareness of food sustainability practices in the university community, and economic constraints. Despite these challenges, UMD has made significant improvements in food sustainability over time. As students, we learned about these improvements by getting actively involved in local markets, the Student Food Committee, and interviewing our campus experts. On the topic of food at UMD, the first place one may think about is Superior Dining. Superior Dining is the main provider of food for students on campus. They serve, on average, 8,000 meals per day to students who live on and off of campus. We got to discuss sustainable food practices with the Director of Dining Services, Claudia Engelmeyer. How does um, your like ability to practice food sustainability change throughout the seasons? Winter is always a challenge, and for us it's really too bad because we normally start getting things in from the farm like mid to late July, depending on the growing seasons, which, you know, that's when we don't basically have any students here to speak of. Um, we would really like to if we had more time and staff to try to can things more like with some of our tomatoes for sauces and those kind of things but we try to freeze as much as we can to extend that season and I know even at the farm um, they've the past couple years have kind of resurrected their root cellar too so we can keep some of the root vegetables a little bit longer but that's just our biggest challenge is over the winter months because there's really nothing available in northern Minnesota. So could you tell us a little bit about how budget affects the purchasing of sustainable food? That's the biggest thing because originally when we had talked about getting produce from the farm when we first started the program and they were going to charge us prices like Whole Foods Co-op oh. and I said oh. and I think that's for larger institutions that's the biggest problem initially we're, we could never afford it but you know he said we'll work we'll work out something so we did I mean we're paying prices that we would normally pay from our produce bid that we would get from any one of our vendors too and it's it's doable. During our initial research we often came across information regarding the sustainable agriculture project farm also known as the SAP Farm. The SAP Farm plays a vital role in UMD's ability to afford sustainable and organic food and in the education of students and the surrounding community regarding sustainable food practices. We had the opportunity to tour the Sustainable Agriculture Project Farm and interview student director Cameron Gustafson. What is like the most val valuable thing that you've learned from the working here? <laughs> That's a hard question to answer. I mean, there's a lot of valuable things. I don't know if there's one overarching thing. I mean, kind of the value of patience and and kind of working towards an end goal. And while at you know at that moment in time you're not seeing what your what the uh, fruits of your labor are, you know, literally. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I think it's the importance of like a a local and you know community focused area that we can all focus on kind of the same thing. It brings people from you know every race, religion, culture together. It's you know, we all eat food, so it's something yeah. we can all rally around and work towards, you know, a more sustainable future. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think the SAP Farm's, like, um, role is in just, like, the goal of sustainability at UMD in general? So, you know, it's really, I think it's really valuable at UMD. It's kind of a staple uh, for sustainability there. 
there's not many schools in the region that I know of that kind of have the thing that we're going on, that we have going on. Uh, we provide, you know, a bunch of food for the dining center as well as provide a place for students to learn, you know, experientially and work with the community. So it's not just UMDs, it's not just valuable to UMD, it's valuable to the entire community. It really builds a sense of community when I'm going out to, you know, farmers markets and people don't really know who we are and I get to tell them and they really think that's a valuable thing and they like that, you know, their college, you know, in this area is supporting that kind of thing. It's, yeah. Like, please come out to the Sat Farm if you need to know who to contact. Contact me. Uh, you can put my information on this video. I will totally okay. give you right to do that. So. <laughs> yeah, come out here. It's a beautiful place. During our research, we discovered how important student involvement and student awareness are in food sustainability at UMD. My name is Alexis. I'm a senior here. Um, my major is anthropology, and my minor is environment sustainability. To me, what you eat is who you are, and there's really nothing else that matters more than food, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, we are all eating it, and that's the one thing that we have in common, and it's what gives our, cell, our bodies life, and it also is kind of what gives our bodies its death, too. It, it can kind of go either way, with, depending on what you're eating. Right. Um, but to me, I, the reason I'm in the food committee is because I want to see more transparency in food. I want students to know that we get like in the dining services, we offer a lot of food from the farm, and we work really closely with UMD Farm, and we're one of the only entities that use food from the farm. The farm doesn't really give their food to very many um, places or people, really. I hope that like with the food committee, students can be more aware of what's in their food and like not having any sort of judgments on certain things. Like if something's dairy-free, it still is good, you know? Um, and knowing that like tomatoes can be a different color. Like I had a student ask me um, when I was in line getting food in the Superior Dining what tomatoes were because they weren't red and they were purple and she thought they were grapes and I was, I myself was shocked but that is like an honest question. Now we travel to Mexico where Mariana and Minerva studied food sustainability efforts in La Pila. Through their shared research we realized they faced similar challenges. Similar to the challenge UMD faces with student awareness, not all the families in the community of La Pila are familiar with food sustainability and how important it is. Another challenge that people face is their weekly food budget. We see from our research, most families in this community rely on going to the grocery store and spend about 40 US dollars per week on food. With widespread education about food sustainability practices, money spent on food generally decreases. The process that we made in Apila was made some surveys to the community and we asked them some general questions about the food. Then we made some online surveys to students and families that live on downtown to compare their lifestyles with the members of La Pila community. What we found is that a lot of people in La Pila live one day at a time and their budget is just not enough to buy the basic to have a good alimentation, like meat. Most of the people in La Pila ate more veggies and cereals than meat. In contrast with the online service, we found that the people in the capital city ate meat almost every day of the week. La Pila, Mexico has also made improvements in food sustainability through the school Francisco Gonzalez Bocanegra. This school educates community members about food sustainability in the area. The school's main objective is to encourage people to grow their own produce so they can feed their families with healthy and fresh foods. Any leftover food that was grown for their family can be sold at markets for extra income. In conclusion, we found that participatory research it is the only way to really know the problems in a society. The University of Minnesota Duluth and the families of Francisco Gonzalez Bocanegra in La Pila, Mexico, each face their own unique challenges. However, they both face issues regarding awareness, production, and development of sustainable practices. Through our shared research, we can see both communities are making efforts towards a more sustainable and healthy future.